Learned helplessness occurs when you don't try to get out of a negative situation because the past has taught you that you're helpless. Learned helplessness can lead to high stress and depression. It can lead to decreased effort to change your circumstances and decreased effort to learn new things. Let's illustrate an example and then talk about how you can overcome learned helplessness and have more hope for your future. For example, a person may repeatedly try and fail to lose weight. He may grow frustrated and come to believe that there is nothing that he can do to lose weight and stops trying altogether. You can fail to lose weight for many reasons. You could fail to lose weight because you believe you're lazy and unmotivated. It could be due to your genetics, or it could be due to the amounts of food you're eating and the exercises you're performing. Or it could be that your weight loss goal is unrealistic, such as losing 50 pounds in three months. Each of those reasons can be seen as a different type of attribution. Attribution is the factor that a person blames for the outcome of a situation. Psychologists have found that there are three specific attributions that lead to learned helplessness. Internal is something to do with the individual instead of something in the outside world. Believing you're failing to lose weight because you're a lazy and unmotivated person is an example. Believing you're failing to lose weight because of the weight loss plan being unrealistic would be external attribution. You're blaming the weight loss plan, which is outside of your control. Stable attribution doesn't change over time or across situations. Believing you failed because you're a lazy and unmotivated person is a stable attribution. Your food and exercise intake would not be a stable attribution because you can change the amount and types of food you eat and the amount and types of exercises you perform. Next is global attribution. This is the belief that the factors affecting the outcome applies to a large number of situations and not just one of them. For example, believing you're failing to lose weight because you fail at everything is a global attribution because you'll believe it's true with your weight loss goals, true when it comes to trying out for a sports team, true when it comes to trying to get a promotion at work, true when finding a romantic relationship, you'll believe it's true with everything. One negative event doesn't generally lead to learned helplessness, such as trying a paleo diet for a month and not losing weight. But if you try many things to lose weight, such as eating plans like paleo, keto, Atkins, Jenny Craig, juice cleanses, intermittent fasting, or try exercise routines like running, biking, hiking, Zumba, jazzercise, swimming, dancing, and CrossFit, and none of them help you lose weight, then those repeated negative events can lead you to being convinced that negative outcomes will continue to repeat themselves and there's nothing you can do to avoid the negative outcome. This helpless belief then becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where you fail to lose weight because you simply give up and not necessarily because you can't reach your weight loss goal. Psychologists believe that we can learn to become helpless. The good news is that they also believe that we can learn to become optimistic. We can change these helpless beliefs by using the A, B, C, D, E method for learned optimism. This method was developed by Dr. Martin Seligman, who played a big part in discovering learned helplessness and is believed to be the founder of positive psychology. Having a pen and paper is helpful for this exercise. We will go through this exercise like we were the person from earlier trying to lose weight. A is for adversity. With adversity, write out your specific event that's occurring to you and focus solely on the facts. For example, in this case, I have not met my weight loss goal of losing 50 pounds in three months. B is for beliefs. Record what you're saying to yourself during this adversity. Write down exactly what you're believing and don't filter anything. For example, I've tried everything and nothing works. I'm just too lazy and I'll never have the motivation to stick to this. I have poor genetics and a slow metabolism. I love food way too much. I'm destined to be fatty McFatterson the rest of my life. C is for consequences and this is where you record your consequences of your beliefs. What are you feeling and what are you doing? For example, I feel hopeless and want to eat fast food instead of the food on my eating plan. I'm feeling like a failure and it's making me feel less confident at work. I feel sad and I feel like canceling my workout at the gym today. I've stopped trying new things because I'm afraid of failing. 
After you've written down your consequences, ask yourself if your consequences make sense given your beliefs. And in this example, the consequences make sense. When you believe you've tried everything, when you see yourself as an unmotivated and lazy person, and you believe you have terrible metabolism and you love food too much, you're not gonna feel hopeful about exercising, and you're not gonna feel like eating healthy food because you don't see a point to it. The D is for dispute, and this is where you challenge and dispute your beliefs. For example, have I really tried everything? I've tried a lot of things, but I haven't tried everything. Is it possible I'm failing because I'm not sticking to a plan long enough? Yes, maybe I should try my workout routine for a couple months instead of quitting it just because I didn't lose weight after three days. Have there been times where I wasn't lazy and unmotivated? Of course there's been times, like in school or certain projects at work that I was excited about. Is it possible my weight loss goal is not realistic? Yes, it's possible losing 50 pounds in three months is unrealistic. Perhaps I'd be better off if I extended that goal to make it 50 pounds over the next 12 months instead. And lastly, E is for energy. Write out a few sentences about how disputing your beliefs affected your energy. For our weight loss example, you might write out, my energy is more hopeful and positive. I believe that my actions will make a difference. I realize that I don't fail at everything. I just currently struggle with my weight loss goal. I just need to be more patient. There are many different things that I can be doing and I'm eager to find what I can do to get better results. My behavior changed by getting back in the gym and back to eating healthier foods because I know that these positive changes will eventually lead to positive results over an extended period of time. Before we go, I want to ask, what adversity are you currently experiencing right now? Think about those beliefs you're having about the adversity and what the consequences of those beliefs are. Dispute those beliefs and replace them with more empowering ones and watch how it changes your outlook from hopeless to hopeful. I hope you find this video helpful and I can't wait to see you in the next video.